Welcome to the Credit Show on KDON. I'm Harry Jacobs. Credit Restoration of Nevada is our company. Saturday mornings, 8 to 9, our new time here on KDON. If uh, you hear something that catches your attention or you're a fan of the show and you want to listen to things that uh, maybe that I have not touched on or perhaps there is something I touch on today that you want to hear again or more of, hear it more than once, forward it to somebody, whatever you want to do. The iTunes Podcasts is another place to find us. Just jump in there and punch in Credit Restoration of Nevada. I, I think we got maybe 50 shows or something in there. Not a lot compared to the amount of time that, that we've been doing this, but, but a handful of shows are there for you. If, you. if you'd like, feel free to go in there and, and listen to what you want to listen to. We'll let you know how to get a hold of us in just a couple minutes. A few easy ways to do that. Anything that we do initially for you is always going to be free. Our analysis of your credit. By the way, we give you a, a nice eight, nine-page analysis of your credit. All the good and the bad. Everything that's happening. Inquiries. Your credit history. Last couple of years. It's very thorough. You don't ever need, need to leave your house, by the way, for any of this. You know, pay for it. There's no obligation. It's just, you know, think about it like it's a checkup that you don't have to pay for. It's covered, completely covered. And by the way, if you want to move forward and have us help you with anything, the same, same thing applies. We can do everything on the computer. You don't have to leave your house or come to our office. It's completely up to you what you'd like to do, how you'd like to move forward that way. But, but we start with an analysis, and that's always free, and that's important for you to know. It's a common question I get from people. You can get to us a couple different ways. I'm going to give you the website, give you the phone number in just a minute. We are text-friendly as well. Grab your phone. Online, the website is CR, like credit restoration, crnevada.com. And on the site, you can book an appointment with us. You can get the information on where to get a credit report. You can see our different programs and plans. There are videos there. There's all kinds of resources for you on the website, crnevada.com. And if you'd rather talk to someone or shoot us a text, everybody's texting. It's, you know, the way of the world. 702-778-2000. 702-778-2000 is the phone number. Text the word credit if you're going to text us. By the way, when you text us or if you call us, we're going to ask you three questions. We're going to ask you your first and last name. We're going to ask you your email address. And obviously, if you talk to someone on the phone, they're going to want your phone number. So pretty easy to, to do that. I will send you an email, by the way, immediately with a link to get your credit report. and That will get us started in this process so I can get things looked at and find out where you are with that. I want to start today's show. Let me get this. I have to print this out. I deal with, you know, a lot of folks that, that have debts that are out of statute, people that are chasing them around for a variety of different reasons. You know, they're debt buyers. And, and, and I shouldn't say a variety of different reasons. It's one reason, right? They want to get paid reaching out to you for one reason, not a variety of different reasons. They have a bunch of different tactics that they use. Got a message from somebody earlier in the week. We had a quick call, I think maybe Monday or Tuesday about this, where they said they had a debt that was $18,000. The credit card was up to at this point. So that, you know, when I let the card go when I had problems. The card was, you know, a $3,000 credit card. Now the total amount due is 18000 I said, let me take a look at what you got, what they sent you. And, you know, the, the tip-off to me, by the way, was when, when she told me about it, I said, what does the letter say? She said, well, I can settle the $18,000 debt for $5,000 today saving me $12,000 plus. And I said, well, I, I think it's a scam. I think it's something that's going to be out of statute. I, I think there's more to the story than 
than what you're actually reading and digesting from that. You're just in shock from seeing that you owe eighteen thousand dollars on something that cost you three grand to begin with. By the way, they're still looking to collect more than you owed to begin with. That's your discount. That's your your total savings of twelve thousand dollars. It's just you know, it's just BS. Is what it sounds like to me. So I said, send it to me. And she sends it to me, and it's from this company that has a logo that looks like it's a law firm logo and I look at the first page and I see yeah total due and I see what the discount is and you know that they're not obligated to renew the offer to to settle the debt for $5,400 on a $18,000 debt saving her over $12,000 There's a bunch of information that they need to put in there, including the uh, what they call the mini Miranda for debt collectors. This is an attempt to collect the debt. Any information obtained will be used for that purpose. This communication is from a debt collector. That's all on page one, including a coupon conveniently located at the bottom to just snip away and slide a check in the coupon in an envelope and include your $5,400 and pay that debt. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. <clears throat> On page two, there's one sentence and one sentence only. But it's the most important sentence in the communication from the debt collector. That sentence reads as follows. The law limits how long you can be sued on a debt. Because of the age of your debt, Bureau's Investment Group, by the way, I gave you the name of the debt company, cannot sue you for it. The Bureau's Investment Group cannot report it to any credit agency either. That tells me that that debt is completely out of statute. Can't credit report? They can't sue you. She said, what do I do? What do I do? And I said, you take that letter and you put it in the trash. The debt's over seven years old. They bought that debt for that that $18,000 debt. They bought that for a couple bucks. They're looking for suckers to take deals on debts that they don't need to pay. Listen, I get that you, as, as a person, and certainly as a person of a certain age, how we were raised, you want to pay your debts. I get that. But when you, when you look at a situation like this, where there's $18,000 being owed, according to a debt buyer that bought the debt for nothing, if you think you're paying someone back, for what you did with that, that deserves to be paid back, you're wrong. If you feel badly about letting that debt go, go back to the original credit card company and pay them a little something. But this debt at this point is so far gone from the original creditor, I bet it's changed hands a half a dozen times. And and it's a thing with these companies. They just buy these debts and bounce them around from place to place to see who gets paid. They buy 10, 20, 30,000, 40,000 of them in tranches. They get a bucket of them. Assign them to collectors. We'll pay you a percentage. Get us paid. And it's a, you know, one of those phone rooms. And they're just calling people or sending letters out and doing whatever they need to do to get paid. So when you're in a situation like this one, where there's a debt that's owed, appears to be owed, and it's out of statute, or you think it may be out of statute, that would be a good opportunity for you to pick up the phone and call me. Look, this took, you know... It's taken me longer to tell the story than it than it did to realize what was going on and to pick up the phone and call her back and say, this is garbage. 
There's nothing to worry about. You're not going to get sued. It's not going to be on your credit report. We looked at her credit report. Nothing was on the credit report. Don't get yourself all wound up. No reason to. Throw it away. Forget about it. Forget about it. Right? No reason to worry. Pretty simple. So if you're in a situation like that and you have something that you think doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, doesn't sound right, you got to pick up the phone. 702-778-2000 is our phone number. 702-778-2000. Text the word credit. Answer the questions, by the way. We're going to ask you your first and last name. Going to get an email address so I can get a look at your credit report. I'll send you an email right away and we'll look for your phone number as well. Although your phone number, if you're texting us, the phone number will be there. If you're calling us, we'll want to take your phone number so I can call you back. As simple as that. We'll get looking at things for you immediately to make sure we're on top of what's happening with your credit. You know, so often people just don't, they don't know. When I started doing this show a dozen years ago, the statistics on people looking at their credit on an annual basis weren't horrible. It was, you know, 50% of the population. By the way, this was two years after the collapse I think when I started doing this show, maybe. Probably right around that time. So, at that point it was 50%. Now here we are a dozen years later, coming up on 13 years. I think I did the first show in 2010. So coming up on 13 years, the, the, the way that people are looking at their credit reports these days 25% of the population. That's it. It's down 50% from a dozen years ago. It's so important. Our credit is so important. If you're a listener of this show for any period of time, you've heard me say the words, it is your adult report card. It is how people will view you for the rest of your life. Anything you want, cars, homes, jobs now, you want to get a water softener or something done for the house, they're going to look at your credit. Unless you're paying cash for everything, which I think is ridiculous. If you have good credit, you can borrow money at very limited interest. Why not use someone else's money if you can and keep your money in the bank? That's my thing. This is the credit show. It's Kate on. We're back on the credit show on Kadon. Saturday mornings, 8 to 9, every week. And available also in the podcasts, if you're an Apple user. I think, you know, if you're a droid person, you also can get the Apple podcasts. And I mean, there are a number of ways to get them. We're also on an app called Podbean. If you're looking for a way to listen to some past shows, we've got about 50 of them or so in there couple of uh, ways to get a hold of us if you need our assistance, if something catches your attention and you need some help with your credit. The website is crnevada.com. CR, like credit restoration. You can book an appointment. You can get a link to Identity IQ to get a credit report. Book an appointment with me. Look at some pricing for different things. Bunch of resources there for you. CRNevada.com. Phone number. We are text friendly, by the way. You could text the word credit to 702 778 2000. 702 778 2000. Give us your first and last name and your email address, and I'll get an email out to you right away. That will uh, get you a link to get a credit report. And I'll be able to analyze your credit immediately. And uh, from there, we can talk about what needs to be done, if anything at all. Listen, I, you know, I've said this before. I, you know, about 40% of the business that comes to us, I turn away. Because there are things as a consumer you can do on your own. 
There are plenty of things that we do that you can do. Sometimes, though, people, you know, you just get to, to, you know, the end of your bandwidth, right? Can I change spark plugs in my truck? Sure, I can. Can I change the oil in my truck? Sure, I can. Do I want to? No, I don't. I go to the dealer, or I go to Jiffy Lube, or I go, you know, to Ted Weens, or you know what I mean? I, you know what you do. You, you, you find someone else. You got a guy for that. Do I want to spray my house for bugs? No, I got a guy for that. I want to clean the pool? No, I got a guy for that. Right? You just, I'm your credit guy. That's all. That's the way to look at it. And if you're if you're there, if you're if you're at the end of your your bandwidth, and you need help, so pick up the phone. Again, seven zero two seven seven eight. 2000. I want to touch on a couple different things in this segment, if I can. I talked last week about bankruptcies. The importance of checking your credit report post-bankruptcy is important. I didn't really get to that last week. You know, when, when you file bankruptcy, the bankruptcy attorney does everything they need to do. But once the bankruptcy is discharged, bankruptcy attorneys rarely go in and look at your credit to make sure things are reporting correctly. It's not, it's not why you hire them. Right? This is no shot at, you know, at bankruptcy attorneys. I talk to bankruptcy attorneys all the time. You know, we do a lot of business. We send a lot of business to bankruptcy attorneys, and bankruptcy attorneys send a lot of business to us. We help people when they've come out of bankruptcy. But one of the things that's common that happens when you file a bankruptcy is that even though everything that was supposed to be included in your bankruptcy, credit cards, unsecured debt, those things, are included in, and no one's chasing you for those debts anymore, sometimes the credit bureaus make mistakes or the creditors make mistakes and they don't mark your account as included in a bankruptcy. Now, when you have a bankruptcy, it's okay for the items you have to still appear on your credit. They just have to be coded a certain way so they're not counted. The algorithms that, that make up the scoring are not part of that. I mean, the algorithms are crazy. You know, the math is far beyond anything you, know, you can imagine. My fiance has a degree in biomathematics. I don't even know what that is. Don't know. I don't know if it has to do with algorithms or not. We've never, she and I have never had that conversation about algorithms. And quite frankly, I don't want to because I'll be staring back at her, looking at her, thinking, oh my God, who are you? Who are you? But, but I'm sure that's something she gets. But... What happens with the scoring with these items in the bankruptcy is that, that they look at those items that were included and they, they don't count. There's no positive or negative impact on your credit score. What can happen, and the reason I'm bringing this up, is that you can have an item that was included in your bankruptcy and for some reason it's not coded correctly and then you lose points for it. Because if it continues to report each month on your credit after you've had a bankruptcy, your credit scores hit even harder. That's part of what they build into these algorithms. They don't. The bureaus don't like when a consumer has a negative item on their credit post-bankruptcy. That hurts you as a consumer. So I think it's one of those things that even though you're thinking to yourself, perhaps, that you're at the bottom credit score is not going to get any worse at this point. So why even check it? It's going to be bad. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it. You bury your head. Well, if there's something wrong and you follow the proper steps and the credit bureaus and the creditors don't correct your credit report, you end up with what's called a Fair Credit Reporting Act violation an FCRA violation. And if you've got an FCRA issue, 
we send you to Jamie Cogburn. And he will sue the creditors and the credit bureaus for you. And, and by the way, they, they will correct your credit report. And you can make a little bit of money. The statutory damages are up to $1,000 for consumers. And you may be thinking to yourself, why would I hire a lawyer? I, you know, I bankruptcy, I don't have a lot of money. Blah, blah. In these cases, there's what's called a fee-shifting provision under the FCRA. And that calls for the plaintiff's fees to be paid by the defendant. Now, I don't know how much you watch Law & Order or legal shows on TV, but the plaintiff is the person doing the suing. The defendant is the person that's being sued. You, in this case, are the plaintiff. You're bringing an action against the credit bureaus and the creditors. They are there to defend themselves, the defendant. Right? So in, in this case, those fees that Jamie Cogburn would charge are being paid by the defendant. Under the law, there's no disputing that. That's just the way that happens. It's the way it is, the way the law is written. If you violate someone's credit report, that fee-shifting provision calls for you to pay those fees. Pretty simple. So I would say to you, if you've had a bankruptcy, I don't care you know, when it was, last handful of years, check that report, make sure things look right. And if you don't know enough, if it, if it looks like Greek to you when you're looking at your credit report, then just pick up the phone and, and, and ask me to do it for you. We'll get it analyzed for you right away, same day, same hour, generally, for people. You just let me know that you need help. Or or just pick up the phone and say, listen, Harry, I, I heard the show. I heard you talking about it. Can you help me? Can you take a look at my report and tell me if you think things look okay? Are things reporting properly the way that they should? And we'll do that for you right away, and, and we do it at no cost. So maybe you, you get out of this scot-free and all we've done is given you an analysis which you did not pay for. And you're able to just go on your merry way and start building credit. That's the perfect world scenario. You being able to just go back to what you were doing knowing that your credit is where it should be. Now, I, I will tell you again that... If you are someone that had bankruptcy, filed bankruptcy rather, and have been discharged, rebuilding your credit's important and it's easy. We do it all the time. We, we can take you from you know, bankruptcy credit scores up to 700, generally in a year, maybe a little bit over that. And we've got a process that we put folks through. And if that's something you need help with, then I'm happy to discuss that with you and help you to watch your credit and and watch it improve over time and help you there so you you know you just you you've got to take the first step in order to do any of this any of these things that you hear me talking about week in and week out you need to take the first step and say okay i am i am ready to rebuild my credit i'm ready to fix my credit. I'm ready to repair my credit. I'm ready to, uh, at a minimum, I'm ready to have my credit looked at. So I know what kind of shape I'm in. Listen, we go get physicals. We go get our cars looked at and tuned up. Why not your financial health? Why not your credit health? Why not do that? That's all I'm saying. So let us help you couple of easy ways to get us. The website is one of them. Phone, obviously, is the other. We're, we are text-friendly. If you want to pick up your phone, I'll give you the phone number in a minute. But the website's a, a simple way, and that's crnevada.com. CR, like credit restoration. crnevada.com. On the site, you'll be able to do a couple things. You can book an appointment with me. I have a Calendly account, and that makes my calendar public. I think it's actually just 
calendly.com forward slash Harry Jacobs. But you'll find it on the website. You can click on a button. It'll give you some times that we can talk. I'm available to chat with you. You can just pick one and I'll call you. You can find information on pricing on our different plans. You can see some videos. You can see me talking on the news about credit and other places if you want. Just general information. Or you can pick up the phone and call us and text us. Either either one of those things will work. Phone number 702-778-2000. 702-778-2000. When you text us, text the word credit. And, and if you do want to call and talk to a human, that's fine too. They're going to ask you a few things. They're just going to ask you for your name, first name, last name, and email address so that we can send you an email. I'll send you an email with instructions on what to do, and, and there will be a link in there as well for you to, to book an appointment with me if you'd like to do that after you get your credit report so we can get it all done. This is The Credit Show. It's Kate on. Welcome back to The Credit Show on Kate on. I'm Harry Jacobs. Credit Restoration of Nevada is our company online, crnevada.com. CR, like Credit Restoration, nevada.com. Phone number 702-778-2000. Easy to get a hold of us. Call us or text us. Been here on KDON for, goodness, coming up on 13 years at this point. A, a long time. I can tell you that. Um, you know, and, and, and what comes with that is, is folks that have followed the show over the years, which I always appreciate. You know, it's nice to have folks that, you know, find some comfort in getting information or in, in, in being able to hear someone that sounds familiar talk about issues that are important to them. I get that. I'm, listen, I'm a, I'm a talk radio person myself. And have been for a long time. We get a lot of calls from folks that talk about fixing their own credit. You know, I can fix my own credit. I could do this myself, but I want to hire you to do it. Well, I understand this, and I know this, and I know that. Because, listen, because they read something about how simple it is to fix things on Google. I've got a, a guy that calls once in a while and will send stuff along Frequently, he is in the auto business. Maybe he's listening to this right now. I'm not going to mention his name. He knows who he is. He knows very well who he is. But he sends stuff a lot that he sees. He, he was sending things a while ago. He found a guy on TikTok that was telling you how to write letters and what to do to fix things, how, how to get your arms around credit. And listen, with all due respect, this guy looked like he was a click away from being a gangbanger. Looks like he's on a steady diet of weed and flaming hot Cheetos and drinking orange Fanta. That's what this guy looked like. And, and he's sitting there in a room. By the way, if you're, if you're putting how-to videos out, just a tip. I'm no expert. But if you're doing that, make sure the room you're in doesn't look like a pig pen. Make sure the room that you're in doesn't look like the kind of room where your mom could knock on the door at any minute and say, Timmy, how many times do I have to tell you to clean this room? Right? That's what this looked like. Now listen, I get that people are hungry and we're thirsty for information. I, I get it. But we have to be careful what sort of information we take as gospel? That's what I'm trying to say. And, and I wrote back to this friend of the show and said, don't, don't send me what, any more from this guy. If you find something good, send it to me. I always want to see what others are saying and doing. And listen, maybe someone's on to something different. I get it. But don't send me the, the video of the guy that looks like he's, you know, got a bong just out of the camera eating his flaming hot Cheetos and what did I say he was drinking? Orange Fanta? Anyway, that's that's my 
my rant on that. But fixing your credit, it's, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, there's a science to it. And things change because the bureaus change the way that they investigate and do things, right? It's not always consistent. It's not like it was two years ago. There are things we can do differently now that, that we weren't doing two years ago. You know, this one of the things in this video on TikTok that I had seen was this kid was talking about getting credit card accounts that were charged off, you know, removed because the credit bureaus have to remove them from your credit. Well, you, you can't expect that to happen. That's not the way that works. There's an obligation that the creditors the what they're they're called under the fair credit reporting act in the in the in the law that they're called furnishers of information furnishers are 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 supposed to there's a reasonable expectation that they will report these accounts for 7 years from the date of activity the last activity that led to the delinquency that's what the law states so when you settle a credit card account and it's done, it doesn't mean it comes off the credit report. You can't just call. I get so many calls from people that say, well, I was going to call this credit card company and just pay it and, and have them remove it. Well, let me know how that works for you because that's not the way that works. There's no obligation for a furnisher of information to remove anything from the bureau. It's not the way that works at all. When you look at what the credit bureaus get in terms of information on a monthly basis and what they have to do, it's frightening. Everything is automated. Even the way that they open the mail is automated. There was a story. We had it posted on our website for a long time. Steve Croft at 60 Minutes did a story about errors on credit reports. Talked to a bunch of people from Experian, three people, I think. He even had his own issues, and he showed himself calling and being put on hold and time-lapse videos and stuff. It was a great piece. But he had three former employees of Experian that sat there and said, we don't even open our own mail. We have a machine that does that. And letters that you send them are scanned. They're given a three-digit code for what type of dispute it is. And they're scanned in, and they're not even looked at by human eyes. That's how crazy that is. And the facts are frightening. They get 4 billion pieces of information every month from 35,000 different companies that provide information on consumers. Loan companies, credit card companies, mortgage companies. The bureaus, they house 202 million credit files in each one of them. The margin of error on these credit reports is high. The, and, and listen, you know, you can be shocked if you want to be shocked when you look at your credit report and see an error. But when you think about what's involved in that process, I, I wouldn't be. I'm never shocked when I see something, when I see an error. I see, let's, let's correct it or let's sue them. In general, it's an easy process. If something is actually factually inaccurate, as the lawyers would say. If it's factually inaccurate and the bureaus refuse to remove it, then we also send you to Jamie Cogburn. I talked about it in the last segment. And you don't have to pay for Jamie Cogburn to defend you, to sue them. Not defend you, but to sue them. To defend your honor, perhaps, I should say. It's paid for by the companies that are reporting the information inaccurately. The credit card company or the loan company, mortgage company, whatever. There are about 202 million credit files, I think, it, last time I looked at it, at the stats on that. But pick up the phone and call us. I'll, I'll look at your credit for you anytime you need. It's a simple process for us to do it. We've got a system in place. Our website, crnevada.com, crnevada.com. If you would like to call us and talk to us, 702-778-2000. 702-778-2000. A few 
few times a year, maybe three times a year, four times a year, I like to talk about divorce and credit. And I, you know, I generally end up talking about it when someone comes to me and says, hey, I've got um, an issue on my credit. I'm divorced. And my husband didn't do this or my husband did do this or whatever it is. And it it's hurting my credit. And I have this document that says that they're responsible for it. So I want to sue. And I, I need to inform you about a couple things if you're getting divorced or you are divorced that you need to do that are important for you. I want you to process this. When you look at events that can ruin your credit in your life, the, the, the list reads like this. You know, it's loss of jobs, it's a medical emergency, and it's divorce. Those are the three most common things. And, and if I had five bucks for every time a new client said everything was good until my divorce and then everything went to you-know-what, it all went downhill. Divorce is difficult enough. People re- rarely think it through in terms of how the divorce will impact everything else, especially financial. You think about the kids. You think about the house. You think about the credit. Maybe not. What I'm going to tell you here is important, and it comes up all the time. People will call and say, listen, I want to come see you and bring you my court order. Bring you this, bring you that. The family, the family court, you know, said my husband was responsible or my wife was responsible, and they didn't do blank, whatever it was. Here's how it goes. You hire a lawyer. Your ex hires a lawyer, and hopefully they get things put away with a nice bow on it. You get a settlement agreement, and it goes away. Doesn't always happen that way, but you hope it does. And once you're done in court, you get that decree and the settlement's done, there's relief. Trust me, I've, I have felt that relief. But if you don't clean things up and divorce yourself, this is important. If you do not divorce yourself from the financial responsibilities that you have, it can screw the rest of your life up or for the next half a dozen years. Listen, because a judge, a family court judge, says that your ex is responsible for a credit card, doesn't mean that your credit card company must take your name off of it. If your spouse is late on your credit, you're late. Listen, the family court judge ruling is important in terms of your marching orders as husband and wife, and certainly the person that violates can be held in contempt. But that's merely a small piece of the puzzle in terms of how you need to extract yourself. Family courts have no bearing over what creditors or credit bureaus do. That's the bottom line. If you've got a credit card together, cancel the credit card, pay it off. you got a car together in, this, in, in both names, sell the car or refinance the car out of your name. You've got a house together, sell the house or refinance the house. Listen, it sound, I'm, I'm making it sound simple. I, I oversimplify this. But don't trash your credit as your marriage goes away. That's all I'm trying to say. When you divorce your husband or wife, divorce yourself financially. That's my message. If you want to get to us, a couple of different ways. The website is crnevada.com. CR like credit restoration. crnevada.com. Our phone number. 702-778-2000, 702-778-2000. 702-778-2000, 702-778-2000. Just text the word credit. Our show airs every Saturday morning from 8 to 9 live here on KDON. We're also in the Apple iTunes podcast section as well. This is the credit show on KDON.